Hi and welcome. In today's video, I would like to show you how to set up and play a specialization summoner. I would like to cover as many things as possible, but at the same time also um, be as new player friendly as possible because even if the class is old for us that have played in other regions, it's new for very many players here in the West. So I would like to talk about basic things and advanced things at the same time. We're going to cover everything hopefully not in a 30 minute video but shorter, I apologize if it's gonna end up being very long, from stats to skills, tripods, priorities, runes, priorities, gems and what you can do with them, um, engravings, sets of gear, what options do you have to mix and match stats, engravings and sets of gear, um, then we're gonna talk about animation cancelling, rotations, what is the purpose of the summoner and how you can play it to its fullest, right? Let's begin by talking about the options in the combat stat department. I prefer to play specialization swiftness. I feel that it opens up more doors as a specialization summoner to play a little bit riskier, I would say. Crit is a playstyle that is slower, obviously, and uh, it has a little bit less cooldown reduction because of the missing swiftness. So because of that, you would have to play a little bit more cautious or try to anticipate more the mechanics that are happening in the chaotic endgame of Lost Ark. Um, for the rest of the video, I will show you this particular build. However, if you want to play critical as your secondary, maybe you already have a specialization critical necklace that you want to use on your summoner, that is perfectly fine and you would go for the salvation set of relic gear as opposed to specialization swiftness which goes for the hallucination set of gear for that extra crit chance and speaking about crit as a specialization summoner you would want to be somewhere in between 65 and 75 percent crit chance just so that you wouldn't overdo it with crit and lose the value that comes from adding another stat for example or another engraving um, and also not to go under a minimum value that is required for example for keen blunt to be mega efficient in this build so crit chance for the summoner would be calculated if you play this particular build we have 25 percent from a level 2 hallucination set which i know you don't have that uh, week one you're gonna have to play for a couple of weeks before you can get to a level two um but we're planning for the future also. It's gonna suck a little bit for the first five weeks, but after that, for the rest of your life, you're gonna feel great. So 25% from that, plus another 15% from my adrenaline, plus the class engraving, Master Summoner, which gives us 16%, plus another 11.8% from Shrudi. Shrudi is a skill that the summoner has, and there is a tripod right here, which uh, gives us 11.8%. This is this puts us at 67.8%. Now, if we also take in consideration for example a crit bracelet which is a new item coming um, alongside the summoner then that's another three maybe 3.5% 3 for the 100 crit that it gives you it puts us perfectly at 71% with this particular build and a hallucination set so that's this build if you take in consideration the other build where you play crit as your secondary stat but salvation as a, st as a set of gear with sort of the similar engravings you have 16 for master summoner about 19% from your crit stat from the necklace and extra books uh, then you have 15% from Adrenaline and another 11.8% from Shrudi plus another 3.5% from um, the bracelet. Puts you at around 65.3% which is again sort of at a normal limit where you would want to be. And speaking about engravings, these five that you see here, Master Summoner, Adrenaline, Garage, Hitmaster and Keen Blunt are the best engravings, the best five to have at level three. Uh, if you're if you're able to play 5 plus 1 uh, as a specialization swiftness with hallucination, then Ether Predator is a fantastic choice for the 6th level 1 um, engraving. From my tests, this, ver this setup right here of 5 plus 1 does the most damage. Now, arguably, you might have, for example, already Cursed Doll, Legendary, acquired for another character and you would like to use this on your summoner as well you can absolutely play curse doll and maybe give up hit master for example and then this would be your five engraving setup however cursed doll loses a little bit of value if you play it alongside a level three of adrenaline so because of that um Hitmaster versus Curse Doll, a strict comparison in between the two um, i found that they do exactly the same amount of damage 
in other classes cases where cursed doll affects the awakening and so it does for our summoner as well uh, we don't use the specialization awakening to do damage with it as it does a negligible amount of it uh, so cursed doll loses that particular perk not to mention it reduces the amount of healing that you get so it also has a negative while Hitmaster doesn't. However, if it's in your budget, if it's already on your characters at legendary stage, feel free to use Curse Doll. There is also an option in which you use Curse Doll and Hitmaster uh, both at the same time and you don't use the Adrenaline um, engraving. Um, and you're going to do that by playing uh, Critical as a secondary and also playing the Hallucination set. That would open up a third way, let's say, of playing Summoner. Not very popular, but just saying if it's Again, in your budget, it's a very viable way. You would have 25 from the Hallucination, another 19 from the uh, Crit Strike stat that you have on yourself. And then you would add another 16% from Master Summoner, plus another 11.8% from Shrudi. Uh, that would put you at about 71.8%, plus another 3.5% from a Crit Bracelet. For example, if you want to go Crit and Specialization, um, then you would be s sitting comfortably without Adrenaline Engraving, um, at a 75% crit rate and you would play like this if this makes sense for you. If you want to play this plus another 6 level 1 engraving, might as well take Adrenaline or you can also take uh, Ether Predator. In terms, of, um, in terms of gems, I would also like to show you this. I've had this question quite often, um, uh, people being very worried about Summoner being unplayable until you get level 9 or 10 gems. I don't know why that would be, but it's definitely not the case. The I guess the same way as you played your Igniter Sorcerers with like level 6, then 7s, then 8 gems until you really got that juice from level 9 and 10 gems on it. Um, the same way you're gonna play your summoner. Better gems obviously mean lower cooldowns, thus more ancient energy acquisition. So it's, a, it's cool to have, we all want level 10 gems, but it's not like if you don't have them on summoner, some rotation or some link is going to be missing and you cannot really play the class or stay competitive in terms of damage, no way. The demonstration today is going to be based on level 7 gems and generally speaking, summoner uh, specialization summoner plays three attack gems, um, one of them on the Shatter Earth, the other one on the Ancient Spear and the last one on Ancient Skills in general. So all of the Ancient Skills benefit um, sort of like a Gravity Training Destroyer or a, a Demonic Impulse Shadow Hunter where you have a one uh, gem for all of these skills or whichever skill of these you choose to use. Yeah, These are the attack gems and the rest would be sort of cooldown gems yeah that makes the ver this version of the summoner cheaper when you get to level 10 gem area right because cooldown level 10 gems are cheaper if i were to put a priority on which gems should you have the highest level of uh, the ancient skill gem should be one of your highest levels here that you have because you're going to be using ancient skills a lot but at the same time don't go full ham and get one level 10 gem damage on your ancient skills and think that you're gonna you know destroy the charts because if you don't have the cooldown reduction at least a little bit of it for skills that generate ancient energy for you to use the ancient skills it's not really gonna make that big of a difference that you can use once every six minutes an ancient skill with your level 10 uh, gem um, but in between you're slow you don't generate enough and your specialization is really bad because you have 15 quality accessories right so uh, it's a it's a it's a harmonious mix of going upwards at the same time. Priority ones, obviously damage on ancient skills, damage on ancient spear, but also very important, uh, cooldown reduction on the horses, cooldown reduction on um, the water spirit, cooldown here, cooldown here. These four are also super important. And then there is the carnivorous lily, which with high cooldown gems of these skills, right, which generate a lot more ancient energy because you can use them more often, then you're going to feel that the uh, lily buff which we're going to discuss in a moment comes maybe a little bit too late so you're going to want a higher level um, cooldown gem on the lily as well but again it's it's all a, a a mix of balance yeah and this is um the build the tripods that we have we play ancient horses two three one these tripods are not high priority simply because they just increase the damage of the ancient horses this one makes it from one horse to five horses so i guess 
implicitly it just increases the amount of ancient energy that you get. Um, still not the highest priority tripods to have at level 5. Um, then the next skill in line is the Sticky Swamp Moss. You play 3, uh, 1, and then if you tear it up to the last tier, which is a valuable tier, you would make it last 2 more seconds because the class synergy that we get from this skill, which is this perk right here, reduces the defense of the target by 12%, effectively increasing our damage by about 6%, right? So um, this is a very important tripod, top priority, by the way, because it's the one that gives you the self-buff with the extra uh, attack power before every burst. So it's really, really cool to have. Uh, Shatter Earth, you play one to one. Um, these, all of these tripods increase the damage of the Shatter Earth, so not top priority in terms of rotation uh, purposes, but in terms of damage purposes later down the road you would want to uh, look into these as well water spirit we have um, three three two this is an important tripod because it increases the amount of ancient energy that this skill generates um, and also this is relatively important because if you if you play it right, you're going to maybe run out of mana, so it's nice to have this tripod on the Water Spirit as well. Electric Storm, a very important skill because it's the one that generates the most ancient energy. We would play 2-3-2, two, two. and this one, um, this one right here is a very important top priority tripod simply because it makes this skill generate even more ancient energy, right? This one is a quality of life tripod. It increases the casting speed uh, of, the, of the skill. So it's nice to have, but not top priority. Maybe, maybe middle priority, sort of like that. It's a quality of life skill. Ancient Spear um, cooldown, uh, this one. So three, one, two. Um, these tripods are nice to have because they increase the damage of your second highest damage skill, so super cool, um, definitely to be looked into, but not uh, like f day one, uh, right? Look into them in, in your second, third day, okay? And um, not lastly, but before last, uh, Lily, you have the attack power buff, uh, this is top priority. You have Shrudi, this is another top priority um, tripod because of the crit chance. You want to get the most crit chance that you can possibly get from this tripod because it's free. Who doesn't want free crit chance, right? And then you have this one that makes it last for longer. Without this tripod and no cooldown gem on it, Shrudi is not going to last as long as it's cooldown. So this is sort of a nice priority on the tripod or just get yourself a level 7 gem um, until you can get this high level of this tripod. In terms of the awakening skill, you're going to use Bargon. The highest priority runes are the wealth runes on um, Electric Storm, Shatter Earth and also um, the Water Spirit. Wealth, wealth, wealth. This one gets the legendary wealth, so all of these three wealth runes are really important. There is another blue wealth on the horses, which I personally use. The um, Ancient Spear has a uh, gale wind rune shrudi has a bleed and here we have on the sticky swamp moss we have a um, um a rage rune and then on the lily we have a cooldown reduction rune now getting into the rotation tldr the main goal is to fill up an energy bar use Akir alongside the Ancient Spear while being buffed by one of your two attack power buffs. That's the gist of it. The faster you can fill up an Ancient Bar, the more successful you are with landing skills that fill it up, and the more often you can use successfully Akir and the Ancient Spear while being self-buffed, the better summoner you're going to be, right? I'm going to show you a couple of examples of different sort of ideas for a rotation. First, the one that makes the most sense for uh, for me personally, let's consume uh, this um, ancient energy so we can always start with, um, with the default. We're going to start by using the sticky swamp moss for the party synergy, um, and then we're going to go into a water spirit, electric storm, horses, uh, all of it while being buffed by Shreddy, and then we're going to get our first Akir, use it, buff ourselves with lily at the same time use the ancient spear skill to be in the same buff from the lily and then cancel the ancient spear animation with the shatter earth skill animation cancelling is a concept we're going to discuss in just a moment after we um uh, uh, after i show you several rotation types right let's begin shrudi swamp water spirit electric storm followed by the horses and then we're close right now to the first Akir. First Akir here, we're gonna cast our Lily and then our Ancient Spear while cancelling the animation for the Ancient Spear with the Shatter Earth skill. And this is a one Akir rotation. 
called in the summoner world. We're very close to a second duck here, by the way. All we have to do is basically either use a water spirit and then we're going to have a second duck here, which leads us into a two Akir rotation. Let's restore our energy, consume it to start again from the beginning. And I'm going to show you that once more. So, Shrudi, Swamp, Water Spirit, Electric Storm, followed by the horses. Soon we're going to have our first Akir like last time. Here we go. Akir, Lily, cast our Ancient Spear and cancel its animation with the uh, Shatter Earth. And then Water Spirit again. Second Akir right here, Sticky Swamp Moss. And then we can keep going with the horses. Electric Storm, buff ourselves with Shrudi once more. And then we have here, we have the Water Spirit, which will give us our next Akir, Akir, Lily. And then we repeat the steps from the first uh, ever Akir, which we cancel the animation of the Ancient Spear with the Shatter Earth skill. This was a two followed by a three, sort of turned into a three Akir rotation right here. There is another way to perform a three Akir rotation with this particular um, combination of skills, let's say. Let's restore our Ancient Energy and consume it. It's by using the Awakening skill Bargon. This one um, fills up a full bar of Ancient Energy, right? Um, so it would start with um, Shruti, then Bargon, then the first type of Akir, where we cast Akir, Lily, Spear, cancelled by Shatter Earth, and then we continue. Let me show you. So Shruti, Bargon, spam that Akir now. We do Akir, we do uh, Lily, we do Ancient Spear. And we cancel the animation of this Ancient Spear with this. And then we continue with the Water Spirit. Um, Electric Storm, we have our second Akir. Use it. Sticky Swamp Moss. Horses, even though we could have used the horses even sooner. Because it has a low cooldown, so we could have maximized on the third Akir right here. Third Akir. Lily. Again, this is the first Akir repeating all over, uh, all over again. And this is basically another type of three Akir rotation. Now... Depending on boss patterns and the type of boss that you're fighting, you might not always have the time to just spend 30 seconds on a 3 Akir rotation, right? So because of that, or maybe a bit less, maybe 27 seconds. Because of that, you're going to sort of juggle into in between two uh, Akir rotations by maximizing on Ancient Energy gain and also obviously maximizing on your skill rotation in terms of which skills do you use cancelling the animation of Ancient Spear with Shatter Earth. Um, another type of rotation would be where you cancel the animation of Electric Storm with Shatter Earth and you leave Ancient Spear as is. However, I feel that it's a little bit of a waste to cancel the animation of Electric Storm with, Ancient, with Shatter Earth than to cancel the longer animation of Ancient Spear with the Shatter Earth skill. And not only that, if you notice, whenever we cast Ancient Spear, it, f it comes after a self-buff. So it's a Akir, self buff, Ancient Spear. We catch both Akir and Ancient Spear in the same buff and we still have like a second and a half left, which means that Shatter Earth to cancel the animation of Ancient Spear is even more valuable than the second type of rotation, which I'm going to show you now. So restore, consume. It's the same thing. Shrudi, Swamp, Water Spirit, Electric Storm, canceled by the uh, Shatter Earth skill. Then we have the horses. First Akir, Lily, and now we basically just let the Ancient Spear do its thing because we don't have a skill to cancel its animation with, right? Speaking about animation cancelling, this is a mechanic that the summoner can perform where if you look at the Ancient Spear, let's uh, set ourselves unlimited cooldown and stuff. Ancient Spear, she goes up and then comes down. Now, again, if I want to move... I cannot until she lands back uh, alongside the Ancient Spear. However, there are skills like, for example, the Shatter Earth. Uh, also, Akir is an animation cancelling skill if used right after. Alimaj is, uh, fits the same purpose. Uh, that can cancel this whole animation. So, Ancient Spear followed by Shatter Earth. The Ancient Spear lands, but before it lands, I'm getting to cast a Shatter Earth also. So, um, it's mega value, in my opinion, to really learn to do this this combination, Ancient Spear followed by Shatter Earth. Another way to cancel Ancient Spear is with Akir, as I told you. You're never going to use this way, but just worth mentioning that it is possible. As you can see, she didn't do the up and down animation. Another way is by using Alimaj. So Ancient Spear, Alimaj on top of it. Um, the animation was uh, cancelled again. 
I think it's important for you to learn this uh, particular trait. It takes maybe a little bit of practice, but you're going to get there eventually. Uh, Electric Storm is something that also has an animation at the end, which we cancelled with Shatter Earth. This is Electric Storm. There is this movement with the staff that after she finishes the cast, she does a side swipe. So if I want to move... It doesn't let me until the side swipe is finished. It can be cancelled with, again, either of the skills that we mentioned, right? This is with Shatter Earth, where she just starts with the Shatter Earth animation as opposed to doing the side swipe with the staff. And just as a quick lesson from the past, uh, speaking about uh, animation cancelling, back in the days, people used to cancel the animation of Ancient Spear with a dedicated skill taken just for that, just to cancel the animation, which was Winged Spirit. Winged Spirit is a charge, is a holding skill. As you can imagine, nobody these days has time to do this, right? However, it is a really cool skill to cancel animation. Ancient Spear, Wing Spirit, and you're out. You can do whatever you want. It's really cool. Um, however, these days it does not fit in, uh, in, uh, in any builds, right? Please don't feel that you're stuck in using these exact same skills that I've been using um, in this exact same order. This is the order in which I got used to it. This is the order which I think makes most sense for me and the type of build that I'm playing, but it's not mandatory you do the same. There are slight variations in terms of which skills you can use. Maybe later on when you get to 1800 specialization, you could potentially replace the horses with uh, Rien's Blessing or if the content feels like you would need Rien's Blessing, you could potentially do this for the Purify and Protection for the next incoming attack. This is a shield, by the way. Or if you're having troubles keeping up um, your Adrenaline stacks, you can definitely use Instant Explosion. This is a fast cast and also a short cooldown. You're not going to feel very bothered by using this and consuming it, even if the boss is not around. Maybe you fight a very mobile boss that disappears very often. Uh, this is a cool skill to just throw out there and uh, keep up your stacks as, uh, as the fight progresses. Yeah, The more you are confident with the basics, which is filling up a bar, pushing the trigger at the right time so you hit Akir, you hit Ancient Spear while being buffed and cancelling Ancient Spear with Shatter Earth and also getting the full damage during a self-buff duration of Shatter Earth. That's much more important than which skill is going to be your 8th. Also, the more you go higher in stats and higher in cooldown gems, the more these skills are going to be getting you Ancient Energy. So having horses here or maybe in some specific scenarios or until you get used to something else, a new fight, uh, not having them, um, some other skills become open to interpretation to add to, a sp to uh, the build and uh, play around with them. What else do I want to talk about um, towards the end of the video? I think I want to talk about uh, the um, uh, Ancient Spear a little bit because it's a skill that brings mega mega value to the summoner not only because it's your second highest DPS skill, but also because it's a uh, destruction skill, parts destruction level one. It's very important to note that each of these spears is a parts destruction level one. So one, two, three, it's a parts destruction level three. Throw a corrosive on the enemy and each of these gets enhanced by one. So it's two, two, two. It's absolutely massive, um, right? And uh, on top of that, it has, um, um, a telegraph that you might need to get used to casting. I want to show you this as well. So we're going to summon a, a boss. Uh, this boss has a bigger hitbox. So what I do with bigger hitbox things and casting uh, Ancient Spear is I look at my mouse position. Uh, my mouse is always in the middle of the first, um, the first circle of the first spear. Each spear has an AoE radius in which it still hits the enemy. Take a look this one right there was an aoe forming there now my mouse is in the middle of the first one so if i want this spear to hit i'm going to plan it to to hit here first because at this point the larger aoe radius is actually going to catch the boss as well so look i'm not moving my mouse one two three i could have even casted it a little bit further back like here for example it's big enough one two three Right? With smaller hitbox um, monsters, what I do, I think about it differently in my head. So I'm not going to count the mouse position 
that being the first hit, I'm actually going to count the end of this particular telegraph, that straight line. And in my head, I'm leaving this much space in between the small hitbox mob and the end of my telegraph. So it's one, one, two, three, and all three hit. Um, that's how much I'm leaving. I don't know how to explain how much. It's just muscle memory for me to leave this much. <laughs> how much is this much? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Lastly, I do want to talk about the summoner's auto attack because I think it's just an interesting thing to know. It's a tracking auto attack, right? So it takes, if you're too close uh, with attacking to uh, the position of an enemy, it just sort of de defaults to that enemy. If you have a group member here that needs a f uh, an imprisonment release, for example, like the Vikas mechanic with the chains or Valtan, uh, you're not going to hit them. So you have to find another way, like for example, moving here and attacking straight, right, or using a skill. I highly recommend the summoner, especially if you have something for free to get her up, like maybe a power pass or a super express event depending on when you're watching this video. Um, the class is not, not only beautiful in terms of visuals, but also in terms of sounds, and not to mention, it's really competitive in terms of damage. Um, as for the gatekeeping, um, I don't think there's going to be much for summoner compared to what it is already for people who simply just don't fit the criteria of the recruiter in terms of item level or gems or whatever uh, i don't think the class itself or the build that you play swiftness or specialization or the secondary stat like crit or swiftness for a spec build is going to be a determining factor for anyone to accept or reject you it might be something else but at least it's not the class itself. And until my next video or live stream, I wish you a fantastic day. Good luck in Lost Ark and uh, see you really soon. Take care.